a year 2019 has been. It's not even over yet. I've gotten engaged. I've done a six episode documentary series, the last episode of which I, I swear nearly killed me. And I've even recently hit 15,000 subscribers. And with this, I, I've really gotten thinking about the channel, especially with stuff such as, you know, being my last year of university and whatnot. And I've decided to announce some things at the end of this video. Oh, except for the one big thing, which is, of course, new shirts in the Stuff We Play Redbubble store featuring a new logo by Crow Cuddles. It's a good rep that merch. Okay, but seriously, um, I, I didn't know how to do something in video form to celebrate hitting 15,000 subscribers. I felt like I should do something, you know, that's like 5,000 more than 10,000. So I figured, what if I do a video with a really clickbaity sounding title, but really and truly it's not actually a clickbait video? Seriously, this video is called, Is This The Worst Pickups Video Ever? Um, and everything I'm going to be showing off is stuff that I think most people will be like, oh yeah, it's gaming stuff, but that's, that's crap. It's, it's absolute crap. So a bit of a backstory uh, on what I'm about to show off. Everything except for the very first thing and the very last thing I'm about to show off have come from one place. And that, of course, is Epic Games and More in Victoria, BC. I love that store. I'm friends with the owners. It's a great place. They sponsored my charity event, but I promise being friends with the owners and them sponsoring and hosting my charity event aren't the only reasons I'm re recommending them. I I've been shopping there since I was 13 years old. It's a great store. A really, really great store. But recently they were clearing out their back rooms and they were like, hey, we have just stuff we need to get rid of that we don't really think, like we think it's not really worth much and that if we actually put it out on the shelves and just kind of sit there, you know, do, do people just want to come and grab it? So yeah, most of this is just stuff from uh, their back room that they cleared out that they figured just wouldn't be worth pricing and selling. So yeah, I have my tea that I really should have let oh, cool down a little more. Jeez, I'm, that is a thing. And I'm also experimenting with uh, a secondary camera that's totally not a knockoff GoPro that can actually record in 4K, which is so actually a pretty good little thing. But yeah, so let's get right into this. So the first thing I'm going to show off in this weird off-the-cuff pickups video, I don't usually do these. I'm really not probably going to do any more of these after this one, but yeah, is the Kechiota game phone. Oh yeah, looks legit with a uh, Battlefield guy and Breath of the Wild on it. So what is this besides looking like the bastard child between a flip phone and a PSP? I found out about this from one of my favorite YouTubers that's also located in Canada, Izzy Nobre. Seriously, fantastic channel. He, he looks at some really cool handheld and phone stuff and whatnot. I found out about this from him and it's essentially a phone with a built-in NES. I, I was intrigued enough that I looked it up on Canadian eBay and it was $12. So I'll probably do a video on this at some point. As you can see, mine is still sealed and it actually has the ship my shipping address still on the top. So now moving into stuff from Epic Games and more. I've gotten some really weird stuff. Like um, first things off, I have a uh, Ruby Volume One. They don't sell anime. I'm uh, I've watched a bit of anime. I don't know if this is good. I know there's a big fandom behind it, but for the price of free, sure, I'll I'll get an anime DVD. Let me know down in the comment section below if it's a good anime or if I'm better off watching Boku no Pico. So, anyways, gonna set that here. Moving on, I actually got something that I remember seeing at GameStop back when I lived in the States. Uh, and this is something I remember seeing like, oh god, probably 10 years ago at this point. And this is actually a, a promotional Brain Age 2 set. I don't know the game, but it has a, a brain keychain and a stylus shaped like a pencil and uh oh and system wraps interesting system wraps let me know if i should decorate a ds light with these down below it's weird but it's also an official nintendo product which is neat i guess following that we actually have a joystick yes this is the maverick 2 joystick for the nes see they they had it priced at one point for 30 bucks i don't know why they didn't put it out it looks kind of like an nes advantage uh, it has it's by quick shot and it has suction cups on the bottom it has two nes controller plugs and a bit of dust on it 
has a kind of eh feeling joystick, but it has really nice feeling buttons. I, I like how these buttons feel, and it has, uh, of course, like uh, turbo switches on it. So that's neat. As I'm, I'm, was I looking for NES joysticks? Uh, not really. I mean, I guess that's something I can use with that Retron 3 I have in the other room since. I don't know, when it comes to owning consoles, unless it's something I actively play, like, as weird as it sounds, ever since I got a twin Famicom, I don't feel like I need to still own an NES. It's like, it's like how I sold my SNES after I got a Super Famicom, because I, I didn't need it. Oh, that was good tea. Next up, we have two PC games. These are Freestyle Street Basketball and Assault Heroes. Are they good? Uh... No clue. Apparently, they're both by Sierra, which is neat. When are these from? 2000? Yikes. Then once I get my Windows XP machine up here, I'll be able to play those. Or maybe even, uh, I brought up my original editing iMac up here, and it has a Windows 7 partition because that's what I did. So maybe we'll work on that. Maybe that's something worth testing out. Speaking of which, I did not own an NES light gun. Now I do! Yeah, it, it's really cool. It's a stereo sound gun. Oh, that's interesting. You can tell it's not official because I'm not sure if you can see this, but there's a Chinese label sticker or a Chinese language sticker on it. Like, look at that. So I haven't actually had a chance to open this up since I've been here or since I brought back home. So let's put that here. Oh, interesting. This is something I can use with the twin Famicom. There we go. It's uh, an NES Zapper style light gun, but it has a connector for the Famicom expansion, co uh, expansion port, which is really neat. Uh, I'm really excited to try that out, especially since, um, yeah, it's funny. I've simultaneously been downsizing my game collection over the past few months, but I've gotten some really interesting stuff. Like, uh, I've gotten rid of duplicate consoles and whatnot. Like, uh, you know, no reason for me to... I don't feel like there's any reason for me to own, like, a Genesis Model 1, 2, and 3. I recently got a PVM from my buddy Jacob. It's a Sony Trinitron PVM. It has some picture issues, but also I enjoy restoring stuff. So I just see that as a challenge. If I can get it up and running, then hey. So this is something... Uh, I saw this there, uh, this tells you when this was right after, uh, Stop Skeletons from Fighting did a video on this. And it's funny because they actually do sell, they do have a few of these for sale at EGM, but they're complete in box. This one was loose. And this is the Xbox 360 HD DVD drive. It doesn't have any cables for it or anything, but also it's an excuse to start getting HD DVDs and... I mean, for the price of free, right? For the price of free, I'm fine getting it. Okay, so this is a this next thing's a demo disc, and it's something I'm really excited to find. Something I'm just flat out surprised to have found for free, and it's a Sago. A Sago, yes. Ah, oh, eat your Sagos. Part of a complete breakfast. No, it's a Sega Saturn demo disc for Bug. Bug's a fun if age platformer, but. I was like, are y'all sure this is a Saturn thing? You know, I'm sure this is worth something. Yeah, I got that. And it, it, it's just cool, right? It's a Sega Saturn demo disc for Bug. And I, I love that stuff. That's the third one I own, technically. All right. Uh, let's see. I have a DS case. That's neat, I guess. We have a Sonic coloring book. Sonic colors, right? Uh, we have a really derpy looking Sonic plush. I love this little guy. He's... He's... Perfect. Another Famicom thing, I get an actual Famicom multi-cartridge. Uh, they just don't sell these when, when they get them in, just on principle, you know, they, they want to stay in Nintendo Canada's good graces, I guess, which is totally fine. This cartridge, I'm not sure if y'all can see, but it's coming apart and it's, there's something rattling inside, so maybe I should test it, but hey, free multi-cart. All right, so... We've seen some pretty cool crap so far, but nothing has been as crap so far as this. No cords, but screw it. It was free. This is an At Games Sega Genesis console. I know I said I didn't need any duplicate consoles, but this thing is such garbage. Such a garbage version of the Sega Genesis. It's such an insult to that classic console that 
for the price of free, I figured, sure, this is something I can not only get, but also potentially do a video on someday. So, yeah, there's, there's that. That's, that's funny. So, after that, there's something that's, alright, actually not crap. It's one that Xbox 360's, uh, Xbox 360 wireless steering wheels. I actually already have one of these. It's actually not a bad wireless wheel. I, I don't know why they were selling it. It, it works. I've tested it. Uh, probably because it's scratched to hell down here, maybe, but I'm happy to have another one. It's a good. It, it's, it's a good. I like that. Alright, this is the final thing I got from EGM. It's by far the weirdest thing, the biggest thing, and that's the Z-Board. Uh, it's a gaming keyboard. It even has things on there, like, uh... Add-ons. I got this one for World of Warcraft, which is neat, even though I've never played WoW and don't plan on supporting Blizzard ever again at this point. But, like, take a, just take a look at this. Also, like, all the cords and stuff are still sealed. So, it's a gaming keyboard, and, like, the actual keys are on modules. Uh, let's see, there's two USB ports in the back, but... Uh, how do I get this off? Because you essentially what happens is you can literally pull the keys off and put different modules in it and I guess somehow that uh, allows you e to, to, to more easily perform pro gamer moves. It, it feels less like something you'd use with a gaming PC and more like something that'd be used with like a Fisher Price toy seem to get it back together but you know I I'm really wanting to focus more on weird hardware come next year uh, you know of course I'll be looking at weird games still as always but I want to do more weird hardware and even some restorations and what's weirder than this thing like oh the buttons are so squishy and so terrible but I kind of love it because of how dreadful it is it's you know it's like it's like trying to play a serious game on a Nokia Engage. It's an awful, awful experience, and you will regret it. But you can kind of see what they were going for. <laughs> actually, fun fact, uh, a close friend of mine was telling me about how she actually got one of these uh, one Christmas. And I think it's probably a, a sign of things to come, because apparently she used it like twice, and then threw it in the closet at her parents' place, and hasn't seen it since. So I think that says a lot about it. And speaking of things that are uh, definite things, I bought a PlayStation Classic and I feel, I have a lot of feelings on a PlayStation Classic. I'm actually going to do a buying guide on this because of how many thoughts. I've never felt so conflicted on a console, but I bought it for uh, 20 bucks, I believe. But for a while, most EB games had them knocked down to 30. Mine sold it to me for 20. That was neat. But I was thinking about also giving away another PlayStation Classic, because, hey, 20 bucks, that's a great giveaway item. So apparently people would actually started buying the PlayStation Classic once they axed the price, because I went back there a few weeks ago, so that was back October 2019. And I was like, hey, do you have any PlayStation Classics in stock? I was like, yeah, uh, new or used. I was like, what's the prices? Um. New is 80 and used is 75. Excuse me? Why? Like, I, I feel like they just upped the price because people actually started buying them, not realizing that the unit itself is kind of a slapdash, thrown together hack job that people are only buying because it's easy to mod and is actually kind of worth it at 20 or 30 bucks. It, it, it didn't just anger me, it pissed me off, right? Like, literally a week beforehand. Oh, yeah. 20, 30 bucks. A, a week later, 70, 80 bucks. Screw you, EB Games. So, I have a couple of announcements. Again, thank you all so, so much for helping me hit 15,000 subscribers. That's awesome. And I know in the making of AOF, along with just all the other stuff that's been going on this year, I haven't been as active as uh, I'd like to be, and I've kind of missed being active. I know my channel suffered for it, but I really am glad I took the time to allow myself to give each AOF episode, especially the final one uh, of those six. Maybe I'll bring it back at some point, but really the time and love that those episodes deserved. Like, uh, episode six, the Sonic Extreme episode alone, took over a year of research. And, uh, like, I literally started working on that one back in October. 2018 and 
I don't know, it was really awesome doing that, and I hope you've been enjoying it, if, and if you haven't seen it yet, you know, click it on the iCard and go watch it if you have, like, a good chunk of time to spare. But with that, I'm really excited to get back into doing more regular content. Like, I did AOF because I was getting kind of sick of traditional YouTubing. And I've come to kind of miss aspects of that. I'm going to apply a lot of what I learned through making AO AOF to my regular videos. And of course, I'll have other documentaries coming. Yeah, and I'm glad I got to actually do documentary style stuff that wasn't very YouTube-esque in style because it was cool. It was really cool and I'm, I'm glad... I'm glad that A, I got to interview people and capture stories that maybe, you know, haven't had a chance to get a bit of that developer insight thrown in before or told from a developer perspective before or attempted to anyways, you know, I'm not the developer. I want to be clear, you know, I'm trying to my best to tell the developer side of story in those because it's not my story, right? But I'm really excited to get back to more regular content. I can't guarantee a video a week. I'm gonna try to do that again. Try. Keyword try. Don't expect that, like, don't expect a video every week, but expect more regular content. And expect more, like, buying guides and may, uh, those restoration videos I keep saying I wanna do. And even just showcases of weird stuff. Stuff like that. I think what I'm getting at is I finally feel like this channel has an identity of its own. And I finally have a style that I really like. Uh, you know, using aspects of my videos, and so I hope everyone enjoys what I have coming up, but of course, don't expect, like, big announcements or convention announcements or whatever in videos. I have a community tab. I do updates there every week, but yeah, th this has been nice. This has been a nice, chill video. I'd like to give a thank to all of our awesome patrons before I end off. You are all incredible, and if you want to back me on Patreon, go ahead and do that. Get access to, like, patron-exclusive vlogs and whatnot. I I've gotten some mean comments recently being like, Oh, what, what type of e-beggar shills their Patreon in the video? I I'm not shilling the Patreon. It's, it's a tip jar, right? It's a tip jar. Anyways, before I ramble on more, thank you very much for watching. If you want to do something that would mean the world to me, why not smash that like button? Oh god, I am never going to say that again. I am internally cringing. But stay classy, you're awesome, and I'll see you next time.